What's up everyone? Today we're going to take a look at screen recording in Linux. Now there's a couple of ways that you can go about doing this. Um, one way that I used to do a lot and probably the method that you've heard of is by using OBS. And OBS is probably the most straightforward way to do screen recordings, not just in Linux, but on Windows. It's a cross-platform uh, application, but there are a couple of problems with the OBS approach. First of all, it's a little bit bloated. Uh, now it's not the worst case of bloat, which would be bloat just for the sake of bloat, but it's a bit bloated because it does a lot of stuff that maybe you don't actually need to use. Uh, like if we just take a look at this interface, you can see that there's a lot going on in this application. Uh, so you have an audio mixer down here where you can see uh, the levels of like your microphone and other audio sources in real time. You can adjust them in real time. You can um, go into your filters and you can apply um, like gain, expander, limiters, things like that. And I think this actually works with VST plugins, so you can get really fancy if you start getting into that world. Um, there's your different sources, so like you can have video from different monitors and there's a lot going on in here and it's probably quite a bit more than you would need if you're someone like me who just needs to record one screen, uh, get output from one microphone, and then maybe also get output from the desktop audio as well. Uh, so that's one reason to consider something else. And another reason is uh, OBS really does not play nice with a pure ELSA setup. And I'm actually doing an experiment right now in Gentoo to see how viable it actually is to live in pure ELSA. So um, no Jack, no Pulse Audio, which for probably 99% of Linux users out there, that's what the, is actually handling their audio. Well, technically everybody has ELSA, but Pulse Audio is just this thing that's built on top of it that uh, most people are using. And in a lot of cases, it's not actually necessary. Um, like I can consume content without Pulse Audio. That's really easy. Uh, recording is, is a little bit more complicated, but anyway, uh, that'll be a different video if the experiment's successful. If you try to run a pure ELSA setup and you go into OBS, um, and right now I do have Pulse Audio installed, full disclosure, but if I didn't, and I want under audio devices, this whole area here would be blank. Um, it wouldn't even say disabled. It would literally just be a you know blanked out uh, input field and you wouldn't actually be able to click this to select your inputs. This whole section would just be broken. Now, luckily uh, you can add ELSA audio sources to OBS, um, but they don't like to work a lot of the time. The only one that just worked was my Yeti mic, uh, which makes sense because this is like the most common microphone that every YouTuber under the sun uses. Um, but yeah, like my my uh, Duo Capture to collect or to um, capture desktop audio, that wasn't working. There was a lot of configuration I had to do in Elsa to actually get it working. So, but the point is OBS is not a viable option if you want to go pure Elsa which brings me to FFmpeg. Now, this is an application that you've uh, probably, that you probably already have, honestly, on your uh, Linux box because it's necessary. It's a dependency for pretty much any application that has anything to do with video, certainly uh, video recording or video editors. It is officially a video converter, as you can see from the top of the man page here. Uh, but it is able to do so much more than just converting different video formats. Uh, so let's get into it. The simplest way to use FFmpeg is with the I switch. So you would specify an input file and then an output file. And this can be a file in the traditional sense, like it can be a wave, an MP4, um, and then same thing with your output. This can be like an MKV or an MP4. But you might know that in Linux, everything is treated as a file. Everything is technically a file. So your uh, webcam that's connected to your computer, that is a file. Your microphone that is connected, that is a file. And your screen as well is a file. 
Um, now the syntax for uh, specifying the screen is a little bit more complicated. You have to use the F switch to specify the format and it's going to be X11 grab, uh, which as the name implies, it just grabs your X11 instance and then turns it into a file. And then we're going to use I for our input and then we're going to put in our monitor, which is 0.0. .0. Now, this is what your monitor is if you've got a single monitor. So, you know, you're basically done. You can do .mkv, and then that's going to start uh, casting your monitor into this file here. But as you saw, I have multiple monitors, so there's a bit more work that we have to do. I know, first world problems. Uh, so, this is my xrandr output. And you'll notice that as it lists all my monitors here, there's uh, the listing of the monitor, the current resolution, and then there's coordinates that specify where that monitor is. So this one, uh, HDMI zero, is actually my middle monitor that you're looking at now. This is at 1920 plus zero. Uh, this one here, the display port, that's the monitor to my right. This is at zero, uh, zero, zero. And then DVID is to my left, that's at 3840. So if I just wanna record my middle monitor like I would in pretty much all of my recordings, I gotta specify those coordinates. So we'll come back over to this um, and we're going to add here plus 1920 comma zero uh, and there's one other thing that we have to do when we're specifying a monitor but really this is just um this is just good practice in general like you should do this even if you're just recording a single monitor is specify the size so that's going to be 1920 by 1080 and the reason for that is if you don't specify the size of uh the screen that you're recording then it can get cut off like it might um it might uh, just do like half of it or whatever. Um, and then this file out MKV already exists. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and overwrite it. And so now you can see it is recording. Um, oh, and you might be wondering what would happen if you have multiple monitors and you didn't specify that coordinate. What uh, FFmpeg is actually gonna do is it's gonna record all of your screens at once. And if you've got three, like I do, it's gonna look ridiculous because the um, the resolution is gonna be like uh, whatever 1920 times three is, like five, actually, I think it says it over here. Yeah, so your resolution is gonna be this right here, 5760 by 1080, uh, which is gonna look really stupid unless somebody's watching it on some like ultra super mega widescreen monitor. Um, so I think we can cancel this now. And you can just do control C to cancel it. And you'll see that now I have this out.mkv and I can play it. And so you see this is the screen that was being recorded. Um, we can actually move this to another, another tag and get full screen. Uh, so you can see that it's good quality. It's not a shoddy application or anything. It records just as good as OBS or anything else does. So we'll quit out of that now. Now, a screencast wouldn't be a screencast without audio, uh, unless you're trying to do something like a YouTube tutorial circa 2008, where you just type things out in Notepad and uh, you know you put some annoying music over it and then you record it with an unregistered hypercam. But in FFmpeg, to specify an audio device, uh, let's bring up that original command that I had there, you want to specify an ELSA device. So if we come after uh, where we have the screen resolution there, we can then do F ELSA I and then we need to figure out what our ELSA device actually is. So uh, if we come back here, you can do a record L, and this is going to list out all your different devices here. So uh, for example, the 
Yeti microphone. This is card three. And I bet you this isn't actually gonna work because my Yeti microphone is in use and I don't have the uh, Elsa patch to be able to record from multiple things, but I can just do the example. Um, so we do I, hardware, or HW, colon, and then the number that maps to whatever card you want to record. And uh, yeah, of course it tells us device or resource busy. Um, but you know, we can do like uh, something different. Maybe we'll do the loop back because that's not doing anything right now. And then yeah, so you can see that this is going to record both video uh, and audio at the same time and then it's automatically going to sync it up. And again, this can all be done in pure ELSA. Uh, if you only have one audio input, then it actually isn't even that complicated to do. The tough part that I found in a pure ELSA environment is trying to record your loopback audio, which is just the sound that your desktop makes, and your uh, microphone at the same time, like you would if uh, maybe you were doing a Let's Play or you were covering something that's in the browser that requires you to play a video. Uh, recording those at the same time is a little bit tough, but like I said, there's still some more experimenting that I'm willing to do to see how viable it is. And if I can get it to work, I'll be sure to give you guys a video of that as well. But for now, that was how to record in FFmpeg. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great one.